Hi, hello, Sergey from Core here. So today I'd like to talk to you about connecting to Microsoft Excel from Grasshopper using TT Toolbox. Before we begin, if you don't know where to get the sample files for this tutorial, head on over to Food for Rhino, find TT Toolbox, and download the TT Toolbox to samples. It's a zip file with a bunch of Grasshopper definitions that will help you better understand how to work with TT Toolbox. And uh, this uh, zip file includes core T3 Excel uh, definition as well. So this is what we'll be using today. TT Toolbox allows you to both read from and write to an Excel uh, spreadsheet. And uh, all the tools that we're going to need are located in this Excel tab over here. Before we begin, we need some data to be able to write to an Excel spreadsheet. So this is what this noodle of components at the top of this definition is really about. We don't have to worry about how this works. This is just generating some sample data for us to ingest, essentially. Um, so all we need to know is that it outputs some curves, it outputs some B-reps, and some numbers uh, that we can then work with. Now that we have our geometry, uh, we can start by extracting some additional data out of it. For this example, uh, we're just measuring the area of our curves and the volume of our B-reps, and then passing the height information unchanged to create a series of key value pairs for height, area, and volume. Now, in order to package this information, we're going to be using attributes. If you're not familiar with attributes in TT Toolbox, we have a whole video uh, dedicated to the subject, but essentially attributes are a way of attaching additional data to geometry in a Rhino document. So in the case, if you have a bunch of Rhino geometry, uh, you can both write attributes to them with some additional information, and you can retrieve that information back at the later date. So in this case, we're using attributes as a convenient way of packaging our key value pairs together. This just makes it easier to you know, navigate the Grasshopper data tree this way. But also, this workflow allows us to very easily take a bunch of geometry in Rhino, read their attributes, and put them in a spreadsheet in Excel. So for a lot of use cases, this specific workflow uh, kind of takes a lot of friction out of the process. To make sure that uh, each attribute has a unique name, we're going to use this GUID component. Uh, we covered that in our utilities video. So if you're not familiar with what these utilities do, then take a look at uh, that one as well. And uh, this just generates a series of unique or globally unique identifiers. Uh, so we can be assured that each name uh, does not repeat. In any case, uh, so now we have a series of attributes and we can head on over and actually write those to an Excel spreadsheet. So to do that, we'll be using the write to Excel component that lives right here, and the Excel settings component that will help us define some behaviors uh, for our interactions with Excel. So for instance, clear values um, determines whether or not we want to wipe our worksheet every time uh, we try to write to it. Uh, so for example, if you're trying to overwrite a long spreadsheet with many rows with a shorter spreadsheet, which doesn't have as many rows, then you might be running into an issue where you overwrite certain rows, but then the rest is left over from the previous write cycle. And in certain situations, you might want that. In certain situations, you don't want that. Switching this to true Make sure that you wipe all the values from the worksheet every time you write. Same with formatting. Uh, so this works in a very similar way. Save and close uh, also determines what we want to do with our Excel instance uh, once we're done writing to it. So you can uh, start defining you know, some patterns uh, of how you want to interact with Excel. And uh, you only have to set them once on this component. Uh, which is really nice. Now, uh, we are passing the um, name of the worksheet, but we are omitting the name of the workbook because we're going to be opening a new instance of Excel. 
Um, but potentially, you could pass the workbook if you want to load a specific file from your hard drive. Then we're passing our attributes to this attributes input. And um, the only thing left to do here is to go ahead and switch this stream uh, input to true. So you can see that Microsoft Excel is springing into action uh, on my taskbar. And here are all of our values, height, area, and volume. Uh, each of those rows is the data we parsed from the sample geometry that we've generated in the beginning. And we just uh, wrote a bunch of data into the Excel sheet. And you can see that the sheet is called GH attributes, uh, which is what we defined um, right here. Now, if you don't want to deal with attributes, or if you're just nostalgic about the old way of uh, writing to Excel, then you also have the option of using the old uh, component from the TT Toolbox version 1.x uh, that we kept around as Write to Excel Classic. And this component uh, takes a data tree of the things that you want to write to Excel. And um, every branch in that data tree becomes a row in the Excel spreadsheet. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and flip this on. And because we specified a different worksheet name, then let's go ahead and see. Yep, so here's our GH attributes that we wrote uh, previously. And here's the new data that we just pushed to our uh, worksheet. Um, one thing to note uh, is that here uh, you can see the settings are being passed just as the key value pair um, in the simple text inside of a panel. The settings component actually uh, outputs just a comma-separated uh, set of settings that is being consumed uh, by the write to Excel component. So you can write those out by hand if you prefer to do things manually. Uh, but these two ways of um, settings uh, are fully interchangeable. So feel free to pick your favorite one. There are quite a few fun things uh, we can do uh, with data that we send to Excel. Uh, one of those fun things is conditional formatting. So here in this example, uh, we are using the classic write to Excel component, uh, and uh, we're writing to the GH conditional uh, worksheet. But then we have a couple of components over here uh, called Excel conditional value and uh, Excel conditional scale. I'm actually going to go ahead and disable this one for the time being. So uh, we'll just focus on this component over here. Uh, this component allows us to uh, take a workbook and a worksheet and then a range of cells. So when we write to Excel, the write component will output the range of cells uh, that it wrote things to. And we can just pipe it straight into our uh, Excel conditional value component. Then we want to determine what type of interaction uh, we want this component to have with the values. So maybe we're looking for values that are less than, than a certain threshold, or maybe they're greater than, or maybe they're unique values. So those um, are the parameters that we can define here. Then we have to provide an actual reference value. So in this case, 100. So uh, this component will look for all of the cells that contain values that are less than 100. And we will color them using the swatch. Now, before I run this, um, I have to fix a little bug uh, that we have in the sample file. So um, this Boolean toggle is plugged into a wrong uh, input on the right component. So it should be pointing to stream. So once we fix that, uh, let's go ahead and turn this on and then head over to Excel. And you will see that we wrote our values. And then these values are highlighted um, with the dark background that we specified because all of these values are less than 100, as you can see. So now uh, let's take a look at this component. So this component allows us to um, 
create a gradient between two different colors uh, based on a certain range of values, right? So like in this case, uh, we also define a range of cells. We define the colors that we want to interpolate between. And then we just go ahead. Um, as a matter of fact, the moment I unblock this component, it ran. Uh, so we can get this nice looking gradient in Excel. And then, of course, um, you know, we took a look at how we can write to Excel, but we can also read from Excel as well. So we're just going to go ahead and switch this stream option on. And we're looking at the GH data tree uh, spreadsheet. So uh, that would be GH data tree right here. And you can see all the values being piped right back. And once again, every branch is its own row. Um, and um, we can actually modify our Excel document and see the changes reflected in Grasshopper. But in order to do that, we're going to need to switch the live uh, option on as well. So here, uh, let's go and say something like, well, let's just replace this with letters. And if we go back, you can see that in Grasshopper, I already have this updated. And uh, we can also write to multiple different sheets. So in this case, uh, we are creating a series of numbers uh, that will help us enumerate our sheet. Uh, we are appending GH to the beginning uh, with a concatenate component, and we are passing a list of sheets. And then um, we're just passing some mock data to this component. Uh, so once again, I'm going to turn this on. And if I look at Excel, then you can see that we have a bunch of new worksheets that are all populated by um, the data that we have provided. And so uh, if you look at the data structure, then you'll notice that our tree has an extra level of nesting. So every leaf branch becomes a row, and every branch above it um, goes into a specific workbook. So uh, this would be an easy way to populate a large volume of data across multiple worksheets, fully automated within Grasshopper using TT Toolbox. This concludes our Excel connection from TT Toolbox in Grasshopper tutorial. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.